and the uh, just do all these. So basically, you have a plastic zone. So I will call this previous or existing plastic zone. Because this one could come from the previous cycle or, or the immediate, the, the last cycle or the previous several cycle. Before, you know, basically it's the furthest uh, plastic zone you can find. Um, and then you have the crack tip and then under that crack tip you have a current. In this case, is the largest. Okay. Um, so the uh, definition is this is DYI, and I don't really care about where that starts. What I care is between the crack tip to the edge of the largest plastic zone in the left. It's my data. So my retardation rate is equal to So obviously, if a DYI is larger than delta, that means your crack tape, or at least the plastic zone of the crack tape is outside of the largest plastic zone, so it resumes. Okay, so let's look at an uh, example. So we have a load case of um, We start at 10, we call that cycle or time one, and we go to two, we done, to three, we go to four, and then we come down. So we we'll just look at how does it change from one to two, three to four. So K1, is equal to 10 1 of 2 is equal to That uh, for the Paris law, um, the so in this case it's actually not parallel; it's modified Paris law. is C times R L times F K of M. So my L is equal to ten to the minus nine point two one. And the n is equal to 2.6766. Of course, I know my r is k min minus k max, and the letter k is k min max minus k min. Okay, so what we need is to find out um, how much the crack has grown result considering retardation or the crack grown with retardation. So let's first look at uh, result retardation. Uh, since we have, uh, we only worry about the transition, just too low, we 
instead of calculate our IMS, we just cal calculate uh, at each cycle how much crack has propagated. Uh, so for the first one, of course, uh, so cycle number one, and we have the max is equal to T1, 2, that's A, B. So from that, you can calculate your data K is You plug into that equation, so the DA or the DN, or I did write down C. How much? Uh, sorry. So that's C. L is 0.55. Right? Okay. So that is easy, so you just put in here, so C is total minus 9.21 times R. So that's a very small number because of this number. The C number is very small here. Okay. Uh, so since we only have one cycle, essentially your data A is equal to DA over DN. Okay. And for cycle two, essentially is. Same thing except the K max now is equal to your K one four and the K min is equal to K one three. Um, so if you plug in all these numbers, you get this is what I call this data A one, data A two is equal to it's even smaller because of um, the lower load. Okay. So let's see how much does how much this number changes when we have retardation. Actually, the first one um, is not going to change because at that time, if we consider the first, there's no plastic deformation, right? So you will not need to worry about the first one. So the second one is the one that kind of think of is the second cycle, the crack is propagated in the shadow of the previous, the plastic zone of the previous one. So that is going to change. So we'll see how much that change. Okay. So so if you consider Retardation. Then um, then cycle number one is no retardation. So 
Delta A is the same. Um, but we do need to calculate the plastic zone of the cycle number one when the load is at the maximum over here. So uh, if you remember the plastic zone, um, the plastic zone size is equal to two of uh, P, and that is equal to one over three pi K one max over sigma y square. Then the sigma y we will give it before we put it back here by sigma y is equal to Okay, so you plug in the number, so K1 max in this case is K1 true. So you get 1 over 3 pi K1 true. So you plug in that number, K1 true is 19.43. So that gives you point your point zero zero four zero zero four one meter. Um, make sure you don't you wind up to the right number or make sure you carry enough legs because your crack growth rate is only minus seven minus eight. So make sure that you carry that number because otherwise you you will cause much runoff errors. Okay. So basically now, so what you have is really if you think of in this term is that the crack will propagate and then at the max it will generate that plastic zone and then you reduce right. So. The data A1 is from zero, and you set that initially zero, you probably get a little bit, but then you have a large plastic zone. Or you could just treat that as your zero, and so if I put my x axis, so that point is my C. Okay, so now let's look cycle number two, that's the excitement happens. Okay, um, so we know that um, the increase or the crack increase data A will be inside. So this is to the power of minus three, right? So that, that's four millimeters. So your plastic zone relative to the crack uh, propagation per cycle is huge. This is um, four millimeters, while your crack propagation is 10 to the minus eight. Um, so this definitely will have a big influence on that. Okay. Um, so for that, so the first thing, let's look at what will be CP2 um, equal to. So in this case, it's going to be equal to 1 over 3 pi K1 of 3, uh, 4. So it's the next logic. So keep in mind that when you deal with crack propagation um, of a tick, it's only the upload um, really matters, right? So the download, unless you go to compression, uh, the download really doesn't do a whole lot. It just go down so that you have another chance to go up. Uh, so what you you need to look for is where that slope, when the load goes up, is what you care. And so for the second cycle, um, your massive load will be equal to that. So, 
So you plug in those numbers, um, you get is point zero zero three. Okay, um, so the question now is based on this, do we count that data A or not, right? Do we say the data A will propagate and then, then we will take this, or the data A2 is not propagating? But if you look at the data A2, it's so small that it probably doesn't matter a whole lot. Okay, because it's 10 to the minus 8. So what you can do is say, okay, I just ignore that. So my current, so I have my largest plastic, so over here, my current is 3.5 millimeters. So that's my CP2 over here. Okay, so from that then is relatively easy to calculate. Um, so my data, I go back to my graph over here. Alright, so CP2 is essentially equal to dy i. And um, the data is from the crack tip to the largest edge of that plastic zone. So it's from here to here. And so that data is equal to CP1. So that's the easy one here. Okay. Um, so my DA over DN base retardation is equal to DYI over so this is true. And so that is equal to dy cp2. So you probably in those numbers, you get point oh oh. And the M is, we take the small number, um, and the that number is what we calculate. Result of it is 1.623 times 10 to the minus 8. So you plug all those things, you get 1.3625. Okay, so the um, retardation actually, if you look here and the here, um, that's how much it has changed. So within one cycle, it doesn't seem to have a huge effect. So that's like, blah, 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 blah. that's the force, right? So it's, it's really small. But if the cycles accumulate up, of course, that makes a difference. Okay, so let's look to see what we have um, for the next cycle. If we continue, we get so we have uh, basically K next. But the third cycle is equal to 13.788. So the reason, so this basically is number three over here, so you can call this five and six, so that the third cycle next will be six, and the will be number five over here. So again, we deal with that upload. Uh, okay. 
uh, the reason I go to the third cycle is because in the second cycle, your crack did not propagate. Okay. Um, or at least before the, you reach the maximum, we ignored that. So now you have the crack propagation based on the retarded, uh, retarded weight. So what you, your curve will be look very different. So if I draw this guy over here, what you have is, again, this is my big uh, CP1. So if I again, draw my X over here, so from here, I call that zero, this is my CP1. Okay. Um, so now the next step is you crack at the second cycle and exaggerating. So this will be your that a true this retardation that it propagate by this much. And then now you have the third cycle come up. Okay. So that is from here to there. <coughs> So your CP3 is not no longer calculated at zero, but to, to calculate at the end of the first, the second cycle, now the crack has propagated over there. Okay. It makes sense? All right? Okay. So to do the same thing, so again, we calculate the R value is 0.69, and my delta K is equal to 0.29. Okay. So you plot those number without retardation. The third one is equal to 2.47. Um, and your CP3 again is the same. It's one of the three pi k max of three and the sigma y. So then you plug in the number we get two times or two times ten to the minus three. So that is a much smaller um plastic zone than what we had before. So now what you want to calculate, so we have uh, um, CP3, of course that is you know, new DYI, we don't need to worry about that. The only thing we want to calculate now is the data. So now the data is between here and here. So that is again at the edge of the largest plastic zone to the current crack tip. Okay. So that delta would be equal to CP1 is measured from zero, right? So it will be CP1 minus delta A2 gamma, uh, delta A2 with the retardation. So So if you plug it into that, uh, what you get is equal to 0 0.004006 meter. Um, because of, that's why I say you need to carry <coughs> enough numbers, uh, because the one before was, what was the first one? Point zero zero four one and then this one is point zero zero four zero six. It's very small number. Um, so just make sure that you take the crack propagation of the previous cycle into consideration. Okay. So 
Now for that, then of course, the rest is easy. So, yes, data A3, A is equal to uh, CP3 over data. If you want, you can also put a 3 that is equal to S. For the third cycle, times to the power of 1.3 times data A3, which is that number. So you plug into that, you get 1.0. So that actually gives you a quite large, at least in percentage, different uh, retardation. So this one is 2.47 and this is 101. So it's almost uh, like 2.5%. Um, it's because this CP3 is much smaller. So it's really inside the plastic. So, uh, so this is nothing kind of technical per se. It's just that you want to make sure you track your crack tip, put it where, know where your crack tip is, and then know where your largest plastic is, so where the edge is, and then the rest should be uh, straightforward. forward. 